Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over a delta hedging script I created. So in the script, I'm just passing in an options chain that expires March 19th, 2021 for the ticker AMC. And what you're looking at is a table of the best returning combination of options along with the stock. So what I'll be doing in the script is making combinations of option strikes and then delta hedging using the actual stock or the underlying symbol. So in this table, we see how the options were priced each day from March 5th all the way to expiration. And the combination was a 14 strike put along with the seven strike call. So by looking at the table, we are short the put and long the call. So on March 5th, we would have sold this put and collected $6.28. And we would have bought this call option for $1.62. And you can see as time progresses how the options are priced or what the price is. So it looks like it went from $1.62 all the way to $6.88. And for the put option, it went from $6.28 to practically zero. So in this column, we get the net premium. And if we keep scrolling through the table, we see that this is the option delta of this particular spread. And we're gonna offset that by buying shares of the actual stock. And this column shows the number of shares we would need to hedge our delta in order for us to get a net zero delta. So with only 14 days to expiration, you can see how the stock performed. It went from 806 to 1365. And the stock value column just shows how much our shares are worth each day. And notice that the number of shares changes each day. So we would have to adjust accordingly each day in order for us to hedge our delta. So for the stock PL, we would take the difference between the stock prices multiplied by yesterday's number of shares. And the same goes for our option PL. If we add these two columns together, we get our gross PL. And this last column is the cumulative sum of our gross PL. So at expiration date, we would have grossed $223.99. So I'll show you guys how to get this table so you could compare whatever stock you're analyzing. If you want to do your own analysis on Delta hedging, or if you just want to know how this all works. So if we go to our script, here are some of the packages we're going to require. This first block just reads in all the options and I'm using TD Ameritrade options chains. So here I'm just focusing on the March 19th expiration for the stock symbol AMC. And I'm only going to extract these columns and I do some adjusting to the dates because they do have a, a timestamp on there. So I'm just removing the timestamp and converting it as a date. So if you're getting TD Ameritrade options chains, all you need to do is pass in the path on where you keep your files and I save mine as RDS files just for ease of use. So let's go ahead and read in all the options by using read RDS. I'm going to subset my data to include all those options expiring in 14 days or less. And then I'm going to generate an ID for the options in order for us to generate combinations of the strikes. Because if we just pass in the strikes, then I won't know if it's a call or a put. So I'm going to generate an ID that ties in the strike price with the options type. So if we run that, and then we take a look at that table. So for the ID, here I tie in the strike dash and along with the options type. All right, so let's go back to our script. So I'm gonna pass in the ID and make combinations of two strikes that cannot match each other. And then I'm going to convert those columns into character variables. So we run this block and then I'll show you what the combinations table looks like. So we get 9,900 different combinations. So I'm gonna iterate through each row and pass in this particular strike combination in order for us to delta hedge with our stock and see how each combination performed. So let's go back to our script. So here we have a function that will calculate the returns and we need to pass in two strike IDs. So if we run this line, this is just the random row I picked in order for us to make sure that this function is working. All right. so. If we subset our options table to include only the option IDs that we pass in, so that'll subset the options table and assign it to temp. So if we take a look at temp, we should only show two different strikes, which is the $5 strike and the 5.5 option strike. I don't need all the columns, so I'm gonna condense my table to only include the date, the option type, the strike price, the mark price, the delta, the stock close, the number of days to expiration, and then the option ID. So by passing in two strikes, we have two options. We can either short the first strike or the second, and we'll do both. So in order for us to do that, I'm gonna create two different tables. 
one that has the first strike showing that we are shorting that option and another table that shows the second strike being shorted and all I'm really doing is just flipping the sign of the last price into a negative and showing that the delta is the opposite sign so if we're short a put the delta is automatically negative but if we short it then it becomes positive so all I'm doing is just flipping the signs all right so I'm gonna run these two blocks so again if we're short the first strike that'll be assigned into S1 and if we're short the second strike it'll be S2 and if we take a look at one of those tables I'll show you what S1 looks like so here we're short the $5 strike so we have a negative price showing we are collecting the premium and since this is a call and we're short then the delta is negative negative. and if we take a look at S2 then the $5.5 strike is being shorted and the $5 strike is being longed all right let's go back to our script all right, I'm going to then extract the unique number of days to expiration and then I'm going to order that set in decreasing order. And we're going to use those days to subset our data by using L apply. So I'm going to pass in the number of days to expiration as a list. I'm going to subset our data. I will then do the calculations here to calculate our net premium, the delta, the stock delta we need and our stock value each day. I will then make a data frame out of that change the column names and then fix the column classes for each of the columns that have numeric values. So here if we run that, I will then need to run do call r bind to row bind all the variables and then I'll show you what that looks like. So here we have a table similar to the one I showed you at the beginning of the video except that we don't have our net P and L's so that's what we're going to calculate next. But first, we need to omit any NAs or just extract complete cases. I'm going to calculate the difference in the stock price each day and multiply it by the number of shares we have. Calculate our stock PL, our option PL, our gross PL, and then the cumulative sum. So I'll go ahead and run this block. And then afterwards, we're going to repeat the process, except that this is for our second table, which we are short the second strike instead of the first one. It's exactly the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run that along with the calculations for our P and L. I will then combine both of the tables by using R bind and then returning that as a data frame. So if we take a look at the final result, here we're showing that the first strike is being shorted and that will be accompanied by the second strike being shorted. All right, so I'm gonna use this function to pass in all of our strikes and we're gonna use PBL apply. I'm gonna use our combinations table and we're gonna iterate through each row. I'm not gonna go ahead and run this because I have actually saved it, but the process took about five minutes to run and that was 9,900 different rows. But after that's done running, you will need to R bind all the results together. So I'm just using R bind list. So let's go ahead and read in all the results. All right, I will then use that table to extract the results by extracting the days to expiration equal to zero. So that will return the final result for each combination. I'm going to order it in decreasing fashion using the PNL column, but I wanted to show you guys a histogram of the PNL results. So if we take a look at that plot. So here we get a nice histogram, almost looks like it's normally distributed. And as we would expect by delta hedging, the majority of the values are at zero, but we do see some outliers. So I'm going to extract the best performing combination by manually assigning the option ID. And I get that from looking at the comps table. So if we take a look at comps. These are ordered from highest to lowest. So here we see our cumulative PL. So the options IDs are the $14 put and the $7 call. So that's what I assigned here. So we take a look at that best combination we get to the table that we viewed at the beginning of the video. So I created the script just to show you guys how this delta hedging works. It's not necessarily used to make money, but it is more mainly used to hedge the price movements. And I assume very popular with market makers since they have to take the opposite side of your trade. So this is some of the stuff that they're doing along with uh, gamma hedging. And I will try to make a script that combines delta hedging and gamma hedging so I'll leave a link down below in the description area where you can get this script so that you can analyze this using different tickers. 
and different options chains. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.